On the steps of Downing Street, she talked very eloquently about fighting burning injustice. Yet, Mr Speaker, her last act as Home Secretary was to shunt the Orgreave inquiry into the long grass. The Advocate General told the House of Lords that the IPCC told Home Office officials that if it announced any action to set up an inquiry or other investigation relating to Orgreave, it would have an impact on the Hillsborough investigation. The IPCC disputes that account. I hope Parliament wasn't misled, and will the Prime Minister now proceed with a full public inquiry into the terrible events at Orgreave? As, as regards the Orgreave inquiry, I, I think the Shadow Home Secretary has an urgent question on that uh, uh, this yeah, afternoon, yeah. which the Home Care Secretary will be responding to. Order. Urgent question, Mr Andy Burnham. Thank you uh, very much, Mr Speaker. To ask the Home Secretary if she will clarify comments made last week in another place on calls for a public inquiry into policing at the Orgreave coking plant in 1984. The Secretary of Home Guards, Thank you, Mr Speaker. Last week, my honourable friend, the Advocate General for Scotland, answered an oral question by Lord Balfe of Dulwich on whether the government had yet decided whether there will be an inquiry into police actions during the Orgreave miners' clash in 1984. He explained that the previous Home Secretary had been considering the Orgreave Truth and Justice campaign submission and that the Independent Police Complaints Commission is working with the Crown Prosecution Service to assess whether material related to the policing of Orgreave is relevant to the Hillsborough criminal investigations, with decisions yet to be made by them on whether any criminal proceedings will be brought as a result. The Government takes all allegations of police misconduct very seriously, and the then Home Secretary considered the campaign's analysis in detail. I can tell the Right Honourable Gentleman that I have today written to the Campaign Secretary, Barbara Jackson, to say that I would be very happy to meet her and the campaign immediately after the summer recess. I would also be happy to meet the Right Honourable Gentleman to discuss this case, as I know this is something that he feels very strongly about. This is one of the most important issues in my entree as a new Home Secretary, and I can assure him that I will be considering the facts very carefully over the summer. I hope to come to a decision as quickly as possible following that. Mr Andy Burner. I promise the Hillsborough families the full truth about the 20-year cover-up. They won't have it until we also know what happened after Orgreave. A year ago, the IPCC found senior officers gave untrue statements, exaggerating violence from minors to distract from their own use of force, some would say brutality. So the force that would wrongly blame Liverpool supporters tried to do the same against the miners five years before. In response, the then Home Secretary promised to consider a public inquiry. That was welcome, because the miners' strike caused deep scars when, in the words of a former Chief Constable, the police were used as an army of occupation. The Orgreave Truth and Justice campaign, as she said, have submitted an application, and it was a somewhat unexpected announcement in another place last week that it would then now be substantially de delayed. The Advocate General's exact words were these. The IPCC told Home Office officials that if it announced any action to set up an inquiry relating to Orgreave, it would have an impact on the Hillsborough investigation. However, the Deputy Chair of the IPCC says, I would like to clarify that the IPCC has not taken or offered any position on whether there should be a public inquiry. That is a decision that is entirely a matter for the Home Secretary. So it's why we've brought her here today. I welcome her offer to meet, but might it not help build the right climate if she today corrects the misleading impression given to Parliament that the IPCC had advised against the establishment of an inquiry at this time? Does she accept that there is no reason why ongoing investigations should delay an Orgreave inquiry and that in similar situations it is commonplace for protections to be put in place to manage any risks? Can she see why the Government's actions look like a Home Office manoeuvre to shunt a controversial issue into the long grass? Finally, Mr Speaker, this, one of the final decisions of the former Home Secretary, was announced as she stood on the steps of Downing Street promising to fight injustice. Yeah. People may remember another Tory Prime Minister quoting St Francis of Assisi outside Number 10 and the subsequent gap that emerged between her fine words and her deeds. Uh, yeah, yeah. To ensure history doesn't repeat itself, will the Home Secretary do the right thing, restore damaged trust amongst people who have already waited more than 30 years for the truth and today order a public inquiry into Orgreave. Um, the Honourable
right honourable gentleman will know that this government has not been slow in looking at historical cases. There have been Labour governments and there have been Conservative governments since 1984, but it is this government that is taking the campaign very seriously. I will not resile from that. I have told the campaign that I will look at the evidence I have. They submitted it at the end of last year. It is a substantial file. It is because I take it so seriously that I am not going to rush it. It would be a mistake to do it today. What I am going to do is look at it over the summer and meet with the campaign group in September and reach a decision after that. But he should not allow anybody to think that this means that I do not take it seriously. We take it very seriously on this side of the House and will reach a proper conclusion when I've looked at all the evidence. Sir Eric Pickles. The future of South Yorkshire Police uh, is clearly linked to this. Uh, these uh, allegations are historic, but if you bring those together with the more contemporary problems, it seems to be a force that's institution uh, yeah, dysfunctionality. Yeah, yeah. And surely Monroe for now must look at the future function of, of, of yeah, South Yorkshire yeah, Peaches yeah. management and not to shy away from any fundamental reorganisation. Yeah. Well, the honourable gentleman will not be surprised. The right honourable gentleman will not be and our right honourable friend will not be surprised to hear that we are doing exactly that. He draws an important point to our attention and it is particularly that issue that the IPCC is looking at. But I can reassure this House, my right honourable friend and the right honourable gentleman, that the work of the IPCC will not delay the work that I will be doing looking at this particular case. Anne McLaughlin. Mr Speaker, the 1980s was <coughs> quite a shocking time in politics. It's a, it's a difficult time to be growing up under, I know the members over there will disagree, under Thatcher. It was a distressing experience for many of us. And what happened, there are many examples, but what happened in Orgreave is one of the most shocking examples of all. And it's not just me who says that. Liberty said there was a riot that day, but it was a police riot. Michael Mansfield QC said it was the worst example of a mass frame-up this country, this century. Alan, that would be last century. And Alan Billings of South Yorkshire Police and Crime Commissioner said that the police were dangerously close that day to being used as an instrument of the state. Frightening indeed. Now, just as the SNP welcome the findings of the Hillsborough Inquiry and urge the UK Government to ensure that accountability follows, we call on the UK Government to go further and not only look at that tragedy in isolation, it's imperative there's an inquiry into the policing of Orgreave to ensure that justice is Order. the public can regain trust. I'm, I'm grateful to the Honourable Lady, but I'm afraid she's exceeded her time. I'm afraid... Order. We're grateful. We really must establish the principle that a time limit on a UQ is a time limit on a UQ. I don't want to single out the Honourable Lady, but it was too long. Forgive me. Secretary of State. Um, well, I, I, I understand entirely the point that the Honourable Lady is raising. It is about the crossover of police behaviour on the Hillsborough incident and indeed the Orgreave incident. And she raises an important point. She is right that there are serious allegations to be addressed, and that is what the IPCC will be looking at. But we will also be making sure that both that the incident, particularly at Orgreave, on the, on the areas that she has raised, are carefully examined. Thank you. David T.C. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, can we also be assured by my honourable friend that any investigation that takes place will hear evidence from police officers who were allegedly injured by missiles whilst doing their duty and allowing people to lawfully go to work? Well, my honourable friend is of course right. This is not, cannot be a one-sided inquiry or investigation. I will make sure that we look at both sides of this, but I must tell him that there are some serious allegations to be considered. Dennis Skinner. One of the things that occurred in the Hillsborough inquiry was the ability of my honourable friend and uh, other people to expose the fact that the police were writing similar things about similar incidents. And in the South Yorkshire Police, as has already been explained, they did exactly the same at Orgreave. I, I went there and I saw it for myself. And it was one-way traffic by the police. And then 
the same statements over and over again written for each of these different miners. So I hope she's not going to be hanging about very long with this. There was an overt promise made that arising out of Hillsborough, the last Home Secretary linked the Orgreave case as well. Let's have some truth and justice for Orgreave. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Honourable Gentleman is right to ask for truth and justice. That's why I contacted the campaign leader this morning in order to make sure that we have an appointment to see each other in September. I assure the Honourable Gentleman I am not hanging around on this. It is one of the most important items in my intray, and there are a lot of allegations, some of which he has raised here today, and I will look at that. Alex Shelbrook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I welcome my right honourable friend to um, her new position, and indeed may I also welcome the urgent question from the right honourable member for Lee. These are important issues. I very much back up what my right honourable friend for Brentwood and Ongar has just said, and I've said from this position before uh, at the end of the um, Hillsborough verdict that the name South Yorkshire Police now does a disservice to the honest, hard-working officers who put themselves in the front line. Yeah, that's good. I appreciate that my right honourable friend is taking time over the summer to consider this inquiry. Could I ask her? Not answer today because I know she can't, but could I ask her to consider that the time has come to reorganise Yorkshire policing yeah. and remove the name South Yorkshire Police? That's a good point. Yeah. Well, I can tell my honourable friend that there has been new leadership which has made a clear commitment to address issues within South Yorkshire, and the incoming Chief Constable will have in place a long-term package of support comprising a number of subject experts from across policing and the College of Policing. They are aware of the damage that has been done, and that may be one of the issues that they consider, but what I think is most important is to have clear leadership to deal with the legacy of difficulties. Alistair Carmichael. Yeah, I welcome the Home Secretary to her new position, wish her very well. I think it is not unreasonable for her to want to take time in these circumstances to consider this, but this is not going to go away. And while this might relate specifically to South Yorkshire, it has implications for the credibility of policing right across the country. Does she accept that this is something which is wholly exceptional and will need a wholly exceptional resolution? Well, the Honourable Gentleman makes an important point. The point I made earlier about historical cases does make it feel like there is a series of issues, series of allegations that need dealing with. And I hope that he will take some comfort from the fact that this government and the former Home Secretary have a reputation for not shying away from addressing these difficult issues. And I will make sure that we continue, I hope, to earn that reputation. Mike Wood. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, my father was a West Midlands policeman in the 1980s and spent some days policing at Orgreave. Uh, clearly, where there is solid evidence of police malpractice, it must be dealt with effectively and with the full uh, force of the law. But does the Home Secretary recognise the concerns of many serving and retired uh, police officers and what they perceive of a political campaign with a predetermined outcome? My, my honourable friend raises an important point, and really uh, the answer to that is why I will take my time to come to what I feel will be a fair answer. Looking at all the information, nothing has been prejudged. There are serious allegations to make, have been made, but I will look at both sides. Steve Rotherham. Thank you, Mr Speaker. There's a very strong thread between Orgreave and Hillsborough, yeah. but there's also a parallel with Shrewsbury. The only way that you can disprove the, what the right honourable, what, sorry, what the honourable gentleman just been saying there about political motivation is to have a full independent yeah. inquiry. Yeah. Yeah. Why doesn't she get on with it and just do it? Yeah. 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 Well, well I thank uh, the honourable gentleman for his view, but I would repeat that it would be the wrong thing to do for me to, as he puts it, just get on with it. What I want to do is look at the evidence. This has to be driven by evidence. The Orgreave Truth and Justice campaign have spent six months pulling together a substantial package and body of evidence. I will not ignore the work that they have done. I will take a careful look at all of it. 
Ian Lavery. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm really concerned at the language being used already by the Right Honourable Lady with regards to the Orgreave incident. In the dispatch box, she just classified the Orgreave incident as uh, a miners' clash. Would you like to clarify those words to this House? The miners' clash. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to refer to it as well as an incident, which is the word that he used. But what I think is more important is to make sure that we look carefully at all the evidence. Once I've had a look at all the evidence, I will have the opportunity to come back and describe it as what it really has when we've reached a conclusion. Sarah Champion. All grief is in my constituency, and I still have people come to my surgery in tears, reliving the horror when they went with their families to peacefully pick it. The violent abuse they suffered, the vile media campaign afterwards. Please, will the Home Secretary give them the justice and the peace by having a public inquiry? Secretary. Well, the Honourable Lady makes a very clear and passionate case, and as we have known that she always does in this House when she campaigns, and I, this is why I spoke to the campaign group, my office spoke to the campaign group this morning, I will be seeing them myself in September. I do appreciate the level of distress and of heart and of historic anger that is part of this case, which is why I will take it very seriously. Louise Haig. Mr Speaker, I brought the campaign um, with my honourable friend, the member for Wandsbach, down, down to see the then Home Secretary over a year ago. It was therefore an unexpected and unwelcome announcement last week to hear that after all this, um, she was still waiting for the investigations to be concluded. The Shadow Home Secretary raised a very serious question about the advice from the IPCC. Will the Home Secretary um, take, that, uh, take the opportunity to correct the record now? And will she give a firm commitment exactly when she will be making the decision after meeting with the campaign in September? Yeah. I do recognise that this has been uh, a long time in coming. I, the incident, of course, was in 1984. Uh, the then Home Secretary made, met with the campaign group in July last year. Six months later, they came with the evidence. So we've had it since the end of last year. Um, I have decided that I will look at this. It is substantial over the summer. I will meet with the campaign group in September and I will come to a decision as soon as I can after that. I hesitate to say anything firmer than that, but I would like to reassure the Honourable Lady that I will come to a decision as soon as I, have, as soon as I can after that. Mark Durkin. Does the Home Secretary recognise that Orgreave is a scandalous episode that we won't get to the bottom of unless we get to the top of it? And it is in that light that many people are suspicious of any possible denial or deferral of a due inquiry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would say to the Honourable Gentleman that uh, I, I know about the concerns that he refers to when he refers to the top of it, and that is where the IPCC focus is. It's about looking at those links from the Hillsborough inquiry that we've already had and looking at the connection with Orgreave. So I will not shy away from looking carefully wherever there has been wrongdoing or wherever there are links. Life bets. Mr. Speaker, while all grief happened many years ago, there are still problems in South Yorkshire Police, as the recent peer review identified. Could I thank the previous Home Secretary and the previous Police Minister for their help in setting up that peer review and their support to the Police Commissioner in getting in an interim Chief Constable and then appointing a permanent Chief Constable? That was welcome. Will she now commit? to support the BCC in implementing the uh, issues that the peer review has identified and will she also have a look at the role of Her Majesty's inspectors who have done several reviews of South Yorkshire Police in recent years and never identified the issues which the peer review has now raised. Wow. Yeah. Secretary. Um, well I thank uh, the Honourable Gentleman for raising that important question. He is right, under new leadership we hope that there will be progress and we will be following that progress under Dave Jones very carefully and uh, my, my colleague the Police Minister has already said that he will be going to see them over the summer. So we take very seriously the improvements they've said they'll make. Alison McGovern. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker. Um, the Home Secretary has said that she's going to make a decision in the autumn. But as Chair of the All-Party Group on the Hillsborough Disaster, along with my friends for Lee, for Liverpool Walton, uh, for um, Holton and others, we spent many hours talking with her predecessor and the IPCC to understand the conse consequences of decisions being taken about that injustice. So can I ask her if she will commit to speak to her friend, uh, the Prime Minister, about that experience, learn those lessons and commit to meeting extensively with members of this House about the horrific events that all grieve. Yeah. 
Thank you, Secretary. Um, I can certainly give the Honourable Lady that commitment. I have already said that I will meet with my right, the right Honourable Gentleman who has raised this question and any other colleagues who would like to join us in that meeting I will also meet with to make sure that I am fully informed and brought up to date by this whole issue and the campaign that has happened so far. Mike Kane. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. I think it's important that not all police officers are tarred with the same brush or grieve. I have personal testimony from Greater Manchester police officers that showed that they did not cooperate with the corrupt practices of South Yorkshire police uh, during that dispute. How does the Home Secretary suggest I feed that evidence into her? Secretary. Well, I'm grateful for the Honourable Gentleman for raising that, which is also an issue being raised by my Honourable Friend here in terms of the reference to his father. We must make sure that not everybody is tarred, if that is indeed what happens, but with the same brush. I would be delighted to receive from him any information he has as well that would help to reach a decision and to be part of the inquiry that I am looking at in September. Order.